Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be focusing on something that's really been frustrating me lately. I've been seeing a lot of posts on my hometown's Facebook page of a lot of dogs getting loose or people uh, with lost dogs. Obviously, I'm very appreciative of all of the people who are finding these dogs, but there are some very simple things that pet parents can do and need to do in order to prevent their dog from ever getting loose. Not to say that it will completely guarantee that your dog will never get loose, but there are precautions that every pet parent needs to take in order to better guarantee that their dog will not be in a dangerous position of getting loose and being in danger of being hit by a car or uh, there's a lot of coyotes around where I live or if your dog is small enough and we have a lot of hawks around. There are some very simple ways to limit this possibility from ever happening to, to you and your dog. It's simple. Okay, so the first thing that I would recommend for everyone with a dog is supervise your dog. Every time your dog is outside, you need to be not only outside with them, but you also need to be paying attention to them. So this doesn't just mean if you're if they're in your backyard and you're letting them out to go to the bathroom or you're playing with them. This also includes while you're on walks with them. It's not a good idea to be on your cell phone or have headphones on while you're walking your dog. Bad idea. Also, even if you're not using those things, be watching your dog while you're walking them. Be paying attention to them and be paying attention to their body language and what they're looking at because chances are they're going to see, hear, and smell something way before you are. They're faster, stronger, smarter. If you are on your phone or have headphones in and are kind of just doing your own thing and letting their dog get their steps in, your dog is probably not enjoying their walk as much as they could be and you're not tiring them out as much as you could be. They don't like it. Walks are really supposed to be about interaction between you and the dog and the dog and the environment. So this means playing some games with them to keep them interested in you on the walk. That'll also help with giving them any tasks that they need to do like sit, stay, come. If there is danger, that could get them to run away from you. Danger! Try not to go too fast or too slow on walks. I see some people who are going faster than their dogs and they end up dragging their dogs and the dogs sometimes slip out of harnesses because of that or collars because of that. Too fast, too fast! And I sometimes see owners going too slow and the dog becomes bored. So you have to find that in between of entertaining your dog but also giving them the time they need to explore. It's very easy to catch on to, it just takes a little bit of practice. It's so easy! When you are on a walk with your dog, always bring treats. I don't care how old your dog is. I don't care how well trained your dog is. He completed his training. It's it's something to fall back on no matter what. You don't have to use them if your dog is very well trained, but they're there in case something goes wrong. So always do that and make sure that they're high value, like real meat. I usually use hot dogs. That seems to be a favorite. Wait! Does that have meat in it? Purchase uh, a carabiner to attach the leash to you. A lot of people have their dogs run away from them because they accidentally dropped the leash. Would you drop it? You dropped it! Um, so make sure that the, the leash is attached to you. You can also get, they're not exactly my favorite, but you can get leashes that, ra that have a waistband. If you're thinking of getting a dog or if you have a dog, you should 100% purchase a training pouch. Um, where you can have a compartment for treats. It can also store any, your keys and your phone. And they usually have rings on them where you can attach a carabiner and uh, attach it to the leash. It, the point is not to be hands-free. I think that's why a lot of people get leashes that go around their waist because they don't want to hold the leash, but that's not the goal. Oh, I don't want to hold it. The, the point is that there's a, more security so that your dog does not run away if you make a mistake. Always walk your dog on a harness. There are more, I don't know what you would call them, compartments, holes in a harness that your dog needs to get out of in order to completely get out of the harness. Whereas a collar, there's only one hole. So if they get out of that one hole, they're out. Make sure that the harness is on like a bra. I can't emphasize this enough. I see a lot of people putting harnesses on like their t-shirts. It's not a shirt. And they're kind of like loose and moving around on the dog's body. You don't want it to be tight on the dog, but you want it to be able to support their body. It shouldn't be moving around on their chest, but it is the safest way to walk a dog with a harness. And I feel 
Safe. I want to mention that harnesses do not train dogs to walk well on leash, but it's the safest way to walk a dog because it's putting pressure on less vulnerable. That's easy for you to say. On less vulnerable parts of the dog's body rather than the neck, which is very vulnerable. Oh, this is one that I, w I, I wish more people would listen to. Are you listening? Use a physical fence. I know a lot of people who have electric fences. Uh, it's really important to know that electric fences are aversive, which means that they create discomfort or dislike of some sort to your dog in order to discourage a behavior, which is not positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement focuses on encouraging wanted behavior. Aversive training is positive punishment, which is it, which is adding something unpleasant to discourage unwanted behavior. It's bad. Well, so the focus is really on unwanted behavior in aversive training and positive reinforcement focuses on wanted behavior. If you focus on wanted behavior, you will get more wanted behavior. And because we know in the animal behavior community, which is a little bit more, um, I don't know, elite? We're getting smarter by the minute! than the dog training community, there's more higher education in the animal behavior community. There's some to a lot of the times no education in the training community. I don't know stuff. Because uh, it's an unregulated industry. But because we know in the scientific community, in the animal behavior community, we know that aversive methods uh, are detrimental to a dog's well-being, there is no reason to get uh, an electric fence for your dog for any reason at all. It's bad for you. Not only that, but they're less reliable. There are problems with physical fences too. They can break, they can get knocked down, they can have holes under them. There's upkeep with that too, but there is less of a boundary. We're defining our boundaries. Boundaries, more, boundaries, and, uh, yes. With a, an electric fence and it also impairs the well-being of your dog. There's many times where uh, an electric fence just won't work. Batteries can die. You, I believe that you have to have them reserviced every once in a while, and a lot of people don't do that. I don't do that. From a professional standpoint, it's not only unsafe for your dog's health and well-being because as science has shown us that if we are more stressed, even people or animals, uh, people are animals. They're animals! The more stress you experience, the more likely you are to experience health issues. That's why we don't want to ever be using any type of aversive method ever. That's a good enough reason not to get an electric fence, but they are less reliable than a physical fence. If you have a physical fence or if you're planning on getting a physical fence, this is not the only thing that you need to be doing. There's more to prevent your dog from running away. A dog can jump over a fence, especially if you don't get a, pro a proper height. Um, some dogs can jump very high. Because there are things that can go wrong with a physical fence as well, you need to have a another backup. While you're working on training with your dog, you can wean this out a little bit, you know, like when, when your dog is being more reliable. But until your dog is really, really reliable, with recall and stay, especially with distractions, you need to have a long leash. It's so long. On your dog at all times. Don't attach it to anything. It, there's no reason to attach it to anything, especially because you are gonna be out there watching them. I would hope that's really super important just to be paying attention to your dog in general. But a long leash will help you reinforce them to come if they aren't listening to you. It'll be easier to work on things with them if they are having trouble listening to you because you can actually get a hold of them and gently guide them away so that you can get them to working distance, which is when they're far enough away from a trigger that they are able to listen to you. So now if you're out in your yard with your dog, you should technically have four things to fall back on to ensure that your dog doesn't run away. A physical fence, treats and or a toy, your supervision so that you can be proactive, and a leash, a long leash. It's extremely important to remember that just because your dog has good recall does not mean that they should be off leash. Uh, let me explain a little bit. I'll explain. There are multiple things that you need to be teaching when you're teaching recall, things that you need to be adding in to set your dog up for success in dangerous situations. The biggest thing that I'm talking 
talking about here is distractions. Dogs are obviously super distracted by other dogs, wild animals, uh, little kids. I'm not little. So it's going to be harder to work with your dog when they are distracted uh, because they're really kicking into their instincts and what we're trying to do is teach them to go against their instincts and listen to us rather than go towards what they want to go to. If your dog has good recall, but they go up to every dog that they see or every person that they see, then your dog should not be off leash. This shouldn't be happening. Also, if your dog is off leash, you cannot just let them do their thing and you do your thing. You still need to be paying attention to them. If you can't see your dog, you've let them go too far. Go too fucking far, man. I've seen trainers do this too, where their dog is just so incredibly far ahead of them in a wooded area. And you don't know what they're seeing that far ahead. There could be a fisher cat, there could be, you know, and just, we don't know because we're not there with them. So it's important to give them the freedom to kind of go where they want to go. We'll get to where they want to go eventually, uh, but it needs to be done safely and we need to be there to supervise so that if there needs to be, if we need to step in, we can do that. But if they're so far ahead that we don't even know where they are or what they're seeing, we can't do that. Um, so it's really important to be working with your dog and uh, continue that um, interaction with your dog while they are on a walk, even if they're off leash, no matter what, you need to be uh, reinforcing that connection to, to, because it's it's it, that is part of your safety net is your your communication with your dog communicate communicate because distractions are so hard to um, they're the hardest thing for dogs to really work on because it's really a practice of self-control that is not something that comes easy to dogs it's not part of their instincts because of this, it's really important not to rush having them off leash. Your dog can be incredibly happy and still be on leash. There's no reason that having your dog off leash makes them happier, especially if it puts them in more danger. You can get to that point, but you need to be doing it safer. Uh, and last thing that I'm gonna talk about is staying at doorways. It's really important, even if your dog, it, even if your dog is well behaved, it's important to train these things because a well-behaved dog does not mean that they are a well-trained dog. If you need them to do something, they may not do it. If they're not, they're probably not going to do it if they're not trained to. So it's important, even if you have a calm and like friendly dog to be working on this stuff, you're lucky. It'll probably be very easy for them to pick it up. It's really important that you work on having your dog stay at doorways and you start this with a leash as well. Uh, but the leash is not to correct them, it's to protect them, okay? Uh, it's a second barrier like the physical fence because we're gonna be working on recall and stay and leave it. Three things, three major things, three of like my favorite skills. They're my favorite. <laughs> that dogs need to learn because I use them almost for everything that's very complex for dogs. I think that's a good amount of things to consider. Consider it. If you are stressed about your dog getting lost, running away, or if you have a high energy dog that likes to chase uh, wild animals or other dogs or cars, the main thing is to keep it fun, keep it positive so that they find you more exciting than whatever is distracting them. Okay, I think I, think I got all of that off my chest. Uh, I really hope that the posts, ow, I really hope that the posts on my uh, community page for my hometown on Facebook uh, for lost dogs goes down because it's it's like every single day and it's really upsetting as someone who works really hard to try and get people to want to do more for their dogs rather than just buy them fun treats and toys. They deserve it. They deserve it. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, stay tuned because I try to post once a week. Uh, it's been a little busy, but I've I try to post once a week a video about animal behavior and welfare based on my eight years of experience working with dogs uh, and training dogs and studying animal behavior and welfare. 